Well guys, we had a hurricane on the west coast not too long ago, so no range time, we got rained out. But what it did allow me to do was get caught up on a bunch of reloading that I've been meaning to do for a long time. And as I'm seeding a 308 bullet, we get an earthquake. And I'm like, holy crap, full SHTF scenario here. I might actually need to rely on this ammunition. Is it waterproof? We got all this rain coming down. I've always wondered that ever since I started reloading. So I came up with a very, very, very comprehensive, very scientific study to figure out whether or not my hand loads are waterproof. I also tested a bunch of other ammunition. So without further ado, let's get into the test. I'm Trent Griswold. My shooting career started at a young age, thanks to my dad, who's a Marine and 40 year law enforcement veteran. I've done just about everything in the shooting industry. Competition, instruction, consulting, you name it. It's been a wild ride. In 2009, I graduated with my degrees in gunsmithing and opened up shop to build long range precision rifles with my brother. Come on in and take a look at some of our latest projects and adventures. So what is this scientific study that I devised to test this ammunition? Well, I got some Tupperware, I filled it up with water, and I put five rounds of these different types of ammunition in there, and I let them soak for 24 hours. That's it. So let's talk about the results. First ammo I tested was the 22 long rifle. This is just Winchester 36 grain plinking ammo, copper jacket, nothing fancy. I thought this one might have a chance just because it doesn't have an exposed primer. Really the only way for water to get in there would be around the bullet and into the casing. So how did it perform? We got four full failures and one kind of, a, I guess you'd want to call it a squib load. The projectile did make it through the barrel, so I don't think it's really necessarily counted as a squib load, but it sounded like maybe just a primer detonation, no propellant. I'm going to call that five failures, all five rounds failed. Up next, we got Winchester white box, nine millimeter, just 115 grain ammo. I have thousands of rounds of it. I shoot a lot of it and it's just kind of my go-to for pistol training. So I've ran a bunch of this stuff through the washing machine, through the dryer, pulled it out and I'm like, Hey, I wonder if this stuff still works. So this is also a cool test that might give me some insight on that. How did the nine millimeter Winchester white box perform? Well, we got one misfire, just didn't ignite at all. And then we had, again, I guess what we should be calling squib loads, but we didn't get a full detonation. So that's two out of five failures with the Winchester white box, nine millimeter. Now to put that test up against some other nine millimeter, we got some gold dot, which is basically defensive ammunition. It's a duty ammunition for a lot of departments. So it should in theory be much better in elements like water and stuff like that. So how did it perform? Well, it performed flawlessly. We had zero misfires. So we got zero misfires out of five when it comes to the spear gold dot. And up next, very, very, very popular rifle cartridge M193. This is military issue ammunition 556. This should be waterproof, right? This is military issue ammunition. Last time I checked our military encounters some moisture from time to time. How did it perform? Well, it performed flawlessly. All five rounds fired, no issue, zero failures with M193. And here we go. The whole reason I devised this scientific test was to test my hand loads. How did my hand loads perform? First of all, let's talk about the load. This is just brass that I've already fire formed, but I am full length case sizing it. I'm not doing any brass prep at all. Uh, I'm not sealing my primers. I'm doing a full length case size, seating a primer, powder, and seating the bullet with just standard match neck tension. That's it. Standard OAL, all that stuff with a Sierra Match King. It's basically mimicking the federal gold medal match without the sealed primer. I was also going to do this test with my suppressor on the 308, but I wondered, hey, if I get a squib load or don't get a round that fully cooks off here, I might get a baffle strike. So I took my suppressor off and man, did it rock me. It sucks shooting into that test with a muzzle brake. Let me tell you that right now. How did my hand loads perform? I got three misfires. Sadly, I got three misfires. My ammunition is not waterproof. So three out of five. 
And the last bit of my test was to see if Federal Gold Medal Match itself, 308, would in fact be waterproof. Federal Gold Medal Match does have a sealed primer. From what I can tell, there isn't anything around the neck or the projectile itself to seal it other than the case itself. So I wasn't sure how it was gonna perform. Nonetheless, we got zero failures with the Federal Gold Medal Match. So it performed flawlessly. And that perhaps is why it is a chosen duty round for a lot of departments still to this day. It's time tested and I have supreme confidence in the waterproofness, is that even a word? of the Federal Gold Medal Match. So would I trust my hand loads in an SHTF scenario? I don't know, the jury's still out on that one. Certainly they're reliable, I've never had an issue before, they're accurate, but moisture could potentially be an issue. So I'll be keeping a close eye on that, and maybe I'll storm in a different fashion. Have you guys ever had issues with wet ammunition? Military guys, people that hunt in uh, very moist environments? Let me know in the comments. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.